I want to get into the verse and the chorus and the bridge and the essence of what that musician and his or her vision of their story is. And I want to bring it out here into the public so that it is lifelike. So in Black Sabbath's case, every song stands on its own two feet. I'm totally dedicated to reproducing those songs that were recorded in that time frame on this console. This piece of machinery allows me to do that. In my preparation for any artist I've ever worked for is I go out and get the record and I start listening to the record over and over. No different than I burned out Led Zeppelin songs when I was 16 years old. It's the same thing. Typically every band goes into a rehearsal hall and they rehearse for a month, some people longer, some people shorter. This is where the heavy lifting is done. This is where all the building of the show is done. This is where all the rewriting of songs happens. This is where we test those extra 32 bars of guitar solo and Dirty Women. All of these, all of these aspects, this is where I set up the SXL with Pro Tools. And I record everything they do. They play a song, they come straight into my room and we listen. And we, we talk about everything. First of all, we've gotten over the textural hurdle of do the drums sound the way they want them? Does the bass guitar have that grit and edge that, that the bass player wants? Does the guitar have that 70s sound and very important here. I could totally ruin that and miss the boat with a digital console. It's a very honest, very dry, very non-processed vocal sound. All of those things are brought before them in rehearsals, right in front of them, right on this console. They're standing right here with me. Great case in point with the, uh, Geezer Butler he is old school, but he plays with his fingers. He likes a very driving bass guitar sound. So he comes in, he listens, he goes, you're almost there, but we need to make it sound more like an old school Fender Precision bass that will be able to resonate and translate and not be boomy. Very tricky. That's like juggling on a medicine ball. But I have all the tools here. I have a willing and able musician partnership with him. We get it done. That's how you do it. You communicate. Once we leave rehearsals, it's just being able to reproduce that energy in a big scale. And I've always said, your Genelex or whatever speakers you use near field are no different than a big, huge gigantic PA system. There is no differentiation. You just have to learn how to wield the beast. That's it. I have a study, it's called the static mix. And it's not my idea, I learned it from Jack Joseph Puig. The console is set right to the static mix. It's gain, top of the fader. It's high pass, low pass filtering, and it's pan bingo to the stereo bus, that is the static mix. That is how I built this show with Black Sabbath. I didn't drop one equalizer, one plug-in, nothing. I simply dialed up a stereo mix in static mix style. So that's dialing up the mic pre for that favorite mic of mine. That's trimming the fat so that when I get to Ozzy's vocal, I've high-passed and low-passed his channel. And then panning. I create that stereo image in my mind that I want to see. I think we all could learn from that process. When you get sideways in your mix, go back to the static mix, strip it down. Strip it down to the very bare essentials and see what you, you come up with. 
no, no subgrouping, nothing. From kick drum to stereo bus and build a mix. I worked under two people in my career, Bill Schnee and Tom Dowd. These two guys, they forced me to mix like that because that's how I learned. You guys all know that I can't do this on my own. So I have a, an amazing support team with me. And one of the focuses of getting back to basics was getting with the band's techs. Now, you know, some of these techs have been with their players for 20, 25 years. If they don't know that guy's guitar sound or his bass sound, who, who does? Surely not me, I'm not, I don't have that. So what, what did I do? We research and we talk about their, their rigs. In the case of the bass guitar, I work very tightly with Terry Welty. His mindset, how, how is he developing that sound for Geezer Butler? That's really important to me because what the bass guitar player is hearing at the bass rig that's what I want you all to hear out here, 135 feet away from the stage. That exact sound, the essence of that sound. How do I get there? I have to go up on stage. I have to get with Terry. I have to get with the musician. I have to be in the moment with them and understand what it is they're doing up on stage. And then, and only then, do we make a choice on what microphones I use. What direct boxes do I use? What other devices do we use to give us that sound that the musician himself or herself is experiencing on stage? I cannot work without Pro Tools attached to my work, number one. Number two, we can't expand on our work without Pro Tools and the synergy that happens with my artists. So let's imagine I'm in rehearsals. Ozzy stands here. He wants to hear Iron Man, okay? After we've been rehearsing, I've got it recorded up on Pro Tools. The console has its own Pro Tools transport. Everything is right here in front of you. So I've got Pro Tools on a transport ready for play. I've got Iron Man ready to recall. So Ozzy's come in, he goes, Greg, I want to hear the first verse of Iron Man. I go, okay. So I'm going to simply, I've got Iron Man targeted. I'm going to hit recall and Pro Tools is now set to Iron Man. I'm going to go to input so you guys can see I, Iron Man play and I just simply hit play. And now I have the band playing on the console Iron Man and Ozzy can now listen to his vocals that quick. I want to hit stop. The band goes, Greg, enough already. Ozzy, you've heard what you want to do. Let's go back to rehearsing. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to hit one button. I'm going to apply. I'm ready for the band to start playing again. While the band is playing, I have the aff affordability to see every single input that I have running on the show. Right, in for, right before me. Right now I have Ozzy lead vocal uh, selected. If I wanted to deselect that, I could just hit deselect and now he goes away and all my inputs come back to where they were. But I wanna go back to Ozzy. And when I hit select, it comes straight up on the channel in front of me. And layouts is something really special for me. It sits for me on the top of the console. Basically layouts are my drum, my parallel compression, all of my grouping. So as you can see, I've got my entire show right here in front of me. I've got all of my grouping, all of my Pro Tools stemming that I wanna to record to. Stereo guitars, the bass guitars in stereo two guitars, a solo group, and a, just a regular guitar group. But then also I have VCA control out over all those inputs. And then if I need to, I've got Ozzy teed up. I can go straight to Ozzy and he's right in front of me. So think about this, guys. I've got group control. I've got overall VCA control right in front of me. 
And then I have Mr. Osborne right in the center of the screen. Now there's one other little aspect of this that I love. So from time to time, we have a lot of inputs. I don't wanna go downstairs to see those inputs. I wanna simply go straight over to Universe. I see all of my inputs right in front of me with input gain, all of the above. So I can see who's playing, who's not playing. And you can make this layout anything you want and snapshotable. That means that you can create a separate layout snapshot for every single song in my set list. I'm not using a mouse for anything. I don't need a mouse. I have everything right in front of me. Everything is right here in front of me, from my groups to my VCAs to my special inputs, all right there on my layout. And if I need to go down, down, down underneath, I just un in engage layouts and I'm right in input mode and with a push of a button, I have my first 24 faders of inputs right in front of me. Um, amazing power, amazing speed. We're gonna go input by input here. We're just gonna look on the input side. Now remember again, I don't assign my inputs very rarely do I ever allow an input to go straight to the stereo bus? So this is an internal kick drum, SM91. Pretty standard thing. I'm just using it for high end. No plugins. It's modest. I have very little gating. And it's, it's one plugin. Same thing for the next kick drum. This is the second kick drum mic. It's a Sennheiser 902. And I do have a small Pultec equalizer in it for old school sound EQ. But if we go on and on and on, you're gonna find, there's my snare top. Snare bottom, because I wanna get some zing out of his, out of the uh, snare bottom. A lot of these EQs, they're no more than three, two or three dB of EQ. Um, I'm choosing to be wide. It seems like this is more like if we were to look at an analog console and its, its waveform on a, on a scope, it would be wide. More kick drum, snare bottom, hi-hat, pretty standard, a lot of high pass and low pass filtering. Bongos, really nothing. I mean, if you were to, if you were to sit here blindfolded and I was to take that off, you'd go, geez, I really don't hear that, Greg. And it goes on and on and on. These are my toms. No, comp nothing. No plugins. A little bit of gating. Just a tiny, tiny bit for, I want to say, decay control. I've tried to create a drum sound that's not completely like John Bonham, but very roomy, a room drum sound, and we'll go to the key of that. We wanna talk about this, and what is it? It's a single overhead over the center of the drum kit, and it's really loud. I've got some compression on it, there's no plugins, and there's minimal EQ. So in rehearsals, I wanted to build a drum sound with three inputs, the kick drum, the snare top, and this microphone. And from there, I would add in what I needed. This is where the body of my drum sound comes from. It is creating a space right over the drums themselves. All of that drum sound goes straight up into it, and I'm feeding on it. We talked about the work we do in pre-production and in rehearsals and the research that I do before the tour starts. It starts right here with Brent Cook. Brent is in charge of the drum kit. He designs the drum kit. He works with the, the drummer to make the drum sound the way they sound. And then we work together to choose the right microphones. Brent also tunes the drums for, big, for the big room. This is very important because this is what gives us the sound. Not me jacking EQ out there, but him making the sound happen 
right there at the drum kit. So let's talk about microphones real quick. He and I are methodical about our mic placement. It has, to, so look, we use an angle meter on the overheads to, to get a meter of exactly where we want the angle of this mic. Also, we have a sweet spot where we've actually measured. This is a great trick for you young engineers. Measure the distance between the center of your drum, your, your snare drum, and the center of your microphone. And you get that going on both sides, and you turn those overheads up, unbelievable. Let's look at the center overhead. You know, you heard me talk about this earlier. This is huge. There is the cornerstone of my drum sound. Snare top, SM58, the center overhead and kick drum, I got a drum sound. This is the good cop. It's a, it's a group, it's got all my drums in it. Also, I have it compressed. And this is the first leg of my parallel compression on my drum. So good cop is my four to one, two to one, whatever you prefer. Very easily compressed. Just kind of taking the entire drum kit and just putting a nice soft hands on it. Then we go to the bad cop and the bad cop is bad. That's like 20 to one, 30 to one, it's crush. It's however, whatever texture it is that you want out of that drum kit. So parallel train tracks, parallel buses, good cop and the bad cop. And you blend that per taste for you. I'm using a couple of plugins on key inputs the kick drum, the snare drum. But if we look straight across the line at EQ, this is a cowbell right here, but from each input, it's really minimal EQ. It's more than more of the case of high pass, low pass filtering in the case of this concert tom. We're gonna go to the second level. More drums, but then we get into the heart of this band, which is the bass guitar the, and the guitar channels. What do we see? There's a common theme here. There's no EQ. Even on my Voodoo, SE Voodoo mic, which is a ribbon mic for dedicated for only the low end of the bass guitar rig, it is absolutely flat. There is no plug-in and it's a beautiful sounding mic. So what is that giving me? That means the console is allowing me once and for all truly to hear that elegant microphone and what it's doing to the bass guitar and how it's adding into my mix. So w instead of using plugins, I'm making microphone changes and it's really, really made all the difference in my work.